ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. The change of command is a time-honored event that runs deep with symbolism and heritage. In times past, the colors were an actual rallying point for troops in battle. In many ways, unit colors provide the same purpose today, to draw people together for a common action. A unit relies upon the unity and loyalty of its members for success, either in battle or in garrison. The colors are the visible symbol of that unity and loyalty. The smooth transition of command within a unit is directly attributable to the non-commissioned officer corps. The non-commissioned officer corps is represented by the organization's command sergeant major, who is responsible for the safeguarding, care, and display of the organizational color. As the command's principal enlisted advisor to the commander, they are the spokespersons for all soldiers assigned to the unit. Command Sergeant Major Velez will now pass the color of the Joint Task Force to Major General Pepin for the last time. Major General Pepin will pass the color to Lieutenant General Roper, relinquishing command. Lieutenant General Roper will then pass the color to Major General Bradenkamp, signifying that he assumes command of the Joint Task Force, effective 2 June 2023. Major General Bradenkamp passes the flag back to Command Sergeant Major Velez for safekeeping.
Command Sergeant Major Velez is, for the final time, passing the color of the United States Army Military District of Washington to Major General Pepin, who will pass the color to General McConville, relinquishing his command. General McConville will then pass the color to Major General Bradenkamp. Under the provisions of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersign assumes command of the United States Army Military District of Washington, effective 1 June 2023, Trevor J. Bradenkamp, Major General, commanding. Major General Bradenkamp returns the flag to Command Sergeant Major Velez, acknowledging his confidence in the unit's non-commissioned officer corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Roper. Let me start by saying good morning. It's great to be in DC on this special day. Let's give these distinguished units a round of applause, the precision and tradition that they represent. Absolutely amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished visitors, honored guests, it's such a privilege to join you. I'd like to welcome General and Ms. McConville, Major General and Ms. Pepin, Major General Brayton Camp and his wife, Major General Brayton Camp, the Honorable Fanning and Mr. Marjorie Cohen, the Honorable Murphy and Mr. Coons, General and Ms. Campbell, General and Ms. McChrystal, General and Ms. McNeil, CW5 Dixon Carter, and all the distinguished and amazing guests that we have here today. Uh, to the family and friends of both families, uh, the Pepins and the Brayton Camps, uh, we're so glad that you could join us here today on this momentous occasion. And I need to be clear about this. Success is never a solo project. These distinguished leaders would not be here today without the support of their families. And these family members are the real MVPs of this occasion. So let's give them a round of applause. And to the men and women of JTF NCR, Thank you for being here today and thank you for all that you do for the command and for the defense of our nation. There is nothing, absolutely nothing more noble than waking up every day and doing the mission of protecting our homeland, the greatest nation on the face of the earth. I'm incredibly honored to represent General Van Herc, the commander of US Northern Command, which was established 21 years ago uh, in response to and to counter a VEO threat to our homeland. While the threat still exists today, the strategic environment is much more complex. We are being challenged by strategic competitors in all domains, and the threats to North America today are significant, and they keep growing. JTF NCR is an important part of our homeland defense mission, and our vision has been focused on on campaigning and implementing a globally integrated and layered defense. And JTF NCR has gotten after these priorities in many ways under the leadership of Major General Pepin. They've made significant improvements to our homeland defense posture, campaigning daily to increase preparedness and resilience. And they've formed critical relationships with our interagency partners to enhance an integrated response to crisis. So today is all about leadership. Let there be no mistake about it. And leadership is really the secret sauce. Uh, John Maxwell calls it the law of the lead, that no organization can rise higher than the quality of its leadership. So whether it's a mom and pop store or a Fortune 500 company, leadership makes the difference. And Al is truly a distinguished leader. Throughout his career in various special operations, cavalry and airborne units, his success in commanding JTF NCR was no different. Growing up in Massachusetts as one of six children, Al learned the value of character, hard work, and accountability from his family. And those attributes were prevalent throughout his command. And let me mention his wife, Heather, who's a, a labor attorney for the US Army, doing incredibly important work. And it takes a special person to balance a successful career while providing the love and support of an Army senior leader, and also caring for the JTF NCR team and their families. Uh, I believe your mother, Mary, she's watching today virtually, and Dad Paul is deceased, but we know he's with us here in spirit. To the siblings, uh, thank you for raising such a smart and humble son and brother. To your son, Zach, and his wife, Kayla, and their daughter, Letty, that's their 19-month-old granddaughter, we know that you're an amazing blessing to Al and Heather and bring them so much joy. So to the entire Pepin family, we thank you for your commitment and your service. And we look forward to welcoming Al and Heather to Colorado Springs for the next chapter of life. To Trevor, there is no doubt. We expect DOD to send us world-class leaders and you are no exception. Trevor Brayton Camp, welcome to the team. 
I'm excited for the experience you bring to this command, and I look forward to working with you to ensure the safety and protection of our homeland. Trevor has commanded at all le levels and has most recently completed a successful tour as Chief Legislative Liaison here in the office of the Secretary of the Army. Trevor, your record of performance and reputation in the Pentagon is quite distinguished. I'd also like to welcome your spouse, Major General Michelle Brayton Camp, and the children, Gavin and Greer, to the U.S. Northcom family. Thank you for being here and thank you for the support you will provide to Trevor as he assumes the mantle of command. Command is an awesome opportunity, but even more so, it's an awesome responsibility. And while the mission is vitally important, the mission does not happen without our most important resource, our people. And while I cannot predict the future, I can assure you it will continue to be incredibly challenging and dynamic, but also incredibly rewarding. Lead with courage, lead with character. Our nation expects and demands this of us. And I encourage you to foster and build on the relationships which will keep our country in day-to-day -day competition and out of crisis and conflict. It has been an honor and a privilege to be with you all on this special day for the Peppins, the Brayton Camps, and the members and family members of JTFNCR. God bless each of you the United States, and the men and women of U.S. Northern Command. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Well, good morning, and it's a, it's a great day to be in the United States Army because we celebrate the outstanding leadership of Al and Heather Pepin, and we welcome Trevor and Michelle to the MDW Command. But I would tell you, every day is a great day to be in the United States Army because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers, and they are represented by the incredible men and women of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the U.S. Army Band, Persians' own. You saw them before here, and we, we sent them off uh, because our troops are too busy to be listening to a bunch of generals give long speeches. So they need to be doing training. They'll be back, but uh, I'm just so proud of how they represent us every single day. And these are two of the most iconic units in our Army. And we often talk about exposing the American people to the armed forces, the United States Army. And these organizations are on the front lines of that effort. And they do it with the utmost professionalism every single day. And I'd like to welcome some of our special guests. I saw our former secretary up there, uh, Eric Fanning. Sir, great to have you here. I think I saw General McNeil. He's, he's right over there, sir. Great to have you here. And there's a whole bunch of other distinguished guests. I do want to welcome uh, the Pepin family out here in Mass. And a special thanks to, to Mom, who's watching this virtually. You should be very, very proud. You raised a, a great son, and we're very, very proud, and I know the whole Pepin family's proud, so how about a hand for Mom? For bringing this to <laughs> and the Brighton Camps are here, too, and so it's, it's, it's very special to have you all here. The DAS is here, and I think the Chief's Chief's here, D.C., so it's great to have you, you all here. You know, there's some Americans who don't know people in the military, but I would argue that every American can picture the Tomb Guards marching with precision and excellence in the worst conditions, conducting the sacred duty of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. And every American can picture the old guard leading our nation's heroes to their final resting place. And every American can picture the Army Band celebrating America's history at the annual Memorial Day and the Capitol Fourth Concerts. You know, in fact, I served with an officer and she came to watch the old guard uh, do the change uh, at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And she was so inspired by watching the precision of those soldiers that she chose to join the Army. That was her primal cue. She's a battalion commander to now. And that's what they do every single day. And the soldiers of the Military District of Washington, really under tremendous leadership. You know, I've, I've 
come to understand the importance of this command. I thought I knew it, but every day I learned something different. And you noticed we did two changes to the command. Two changes to the command because the commander here, Al, works for Northcom and also for, for the, the, the headquarters department of the Army. But I would argue it's not two bosses. He has about 550 bosses or so. You know, he certainly works for the President of the United States. He works for SecDef. He works for the Secretary of the Army, the Chief of Staff of the Army, the Northcom Commander, and the Congress, 535 members. But he works for all of us. And everything they do in this organization is a great event. It's extremely important. Guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, putting our soldiers final to rest. Every time they're in the public's eye, they're being graded, and I can tell you they do it with the utmost professionalism uh, that I've ever seen. And they do it not only for America, but for the entire world. The entire world watches what they do. And each and every one of them embody the spirit of being all they can be. And I can just tell you, I'm just so proud to serve with each and every one of them. And they also serve along, you know, this is a joint force. It's not just an army force. And they serve alongside the world's greatest Marines, sailors, airmen, guardians, and coastmen, coast guardsmen, as members of the Joint Task Force National Capital Region. And that mission, JTF NCR, is Homeland Defense and Civil Support Operations. In other words, these men and women are charged with the critical responsibility of defending the capital of the free world in times of crisis. And this, this region, I would argue, is, is if not the most, it's one of the most unique and complex joint operational environments in the world. And Al, you have done an absolutely fantastic job of leading this organization. And very few will know all the things that you do every single day to, 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 to go ahead and take care of these great soldiers and all these critical events that are so important to our nation. The other thing is, you know, Al is the senior commander to four military installations, four military installations and four Army agencies. He also has general court martial authority for over 400 agencies in the world. He's also responsible, I learned today, for the Army Mammal Maritime Detachment, whatever they do. I'm sure they're important, and they are, you know, but they're under his command too, so uh, really important. But he has ensured that this command has met every mission with a standard of excellence achieved by very few. So, Al, thank you for your outstanding le leadership. You have really made a difference. And I want to take a second to thank Heather. You know, this morning we're doing an award ceremony, and it came time uh, to give an award to Heather. And here's what I found out. You know, Heather is a, a lawyer for the United States Army. She works in our TJ. And she's done incredible things for, for Al, for her family, for the Army. She's a professional. And we had the award approved all the way up to the TJ. And when it got to their office, they said, we can't give an award because she actually works for the Department of the Army. But here's what I want to do. I want to recognize you and give you a standing of How about a hand for Heather? Because I'll tell you what. <laughs> Al would not be here without her. He wouldn't have this family. And uh, I know what our spouses do. And uh, you really make a difference. So she got the coveted Chief of Staff of the Army coin. You could take that away. And uh, from me, you get a joint award and a, and a special thanks. So Heather. Thanks to you, and I really mean that. You know, we're going to miss you both, and, 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 and wish we want, we want to do is wish your family um, the best in your next rendezvous with destiny, which is Colorado Springs, and you're going to go up there, and, and uh, Al is going to be the chief of staff for Northcom, and, you know, we hope to see uh, many other uh, follow-on assignments after that, but he will do great things. And we're very, very blessed to have Trevor and Michelle uh, coming in to continue to maintain the high standard of excellence that this job demands. And we have complete faith and trust in Trevor. And, you know, we all know this, but for those who don't, you know, Trevor's a battle-tested leader and professional, multiple combat tours in, in the 82nd Airborne Division. And I can say the same thing about Michelle, but she's also a combat veteran of that other Airborne Division, the 101st Airborne Division, which is very, very special. Okay. And, you know, it takes a certain person to command here. And Trevor's got the right credentials. He, like I said, a, a proven leader in combat, but he also understands this place. He has another combat tour 
as Chief of Legislation Liaison uh, working for the Army. And I think that's at least my experience with that job. That may be a tougher one than, uh, you know, than actually probably going out there with the 82nd. But, you know, Trevor, we got complete faith and trust in you. You will accomplish every assigned mission with the utmost professional professionalism while you're taking care of our troops and families. And we appreciate all you do every single day. And so with that, I will close out. God bless this great organization. God bless the United States. Um, it's about people first, winning matters. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Pepin. I do not know how you follow seven stars, but I'll try. Distinguished guests, general officers, flag officers, joint teammates, interagency teammates, community leaders, veterans and friends, thank you for the support of this great team. Thanks to all who helped put today's event together. To the protocol teams, the community outreach team, Chapman Foster, Old Gord, and Person's Own teammates. Again, once another event that looks great because the soldiers and the civilians that ensure everything looks right. Please join me in another round of applause for them. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for highlighting Heather and the family. Again, to my wife, Heather, I love you beyond any words that can describe my expression of enduring support and affection for you. And again, the support to our family, service members and their families. And I'm proud and incredibly of your efforts as a professional lawyer uh, supporting the Army team as an expert in the civilian labor attorney. So again, thank you. The, uh, to our son, Zach, I'm so proud of the man, the husband, and now the father you have become. Uh, and we're grateful to have Kaylor as you know, the daughter-in-law, and again, our granddaughter, Liddy. Yeah, so proud of you for the example you set. To my father, Paul, who's looking down on us, and no doubt with pride as a US Air Force veteran, and my mother, Mary, again, watching virtually, Thank you for, again, instilling those values and accountability and work ethic uh, so important to a young kid uh, and has paid dividends as, as a soldier. To my Uncle Alan, a Vietnam veteran, the uh, local home, and I'm proud to share your name. To my five older siblings, and I say older because they are older, um, Mary Beth, Anne Marie, Eleanor, Michelle, my brother Paul, who's also an Air Force veteran, the, uh, who brought his family here. Thank you again for your enduring hazing um, harassment, but also support uh, throughout my life and the positive influence you've had on me. General McConnell, thank you again for your steadfast leadership, your counsel and trust in me and this team, and the support to our, our whole Army, the uh, senior leaders' uh, investment in this command. And again, Chief, on behalf of the whole military discharge team, thank you, uh, Maria, for your 40 plus years of service. The, uh, we wish you the best when you step down as the Chief. The, uh, you've been a great example for the Army and our nation. Lieutenant Roper and General Van Herk, thank you for your leadership, empowerment, and support from the NORTHCOM team. And again, as the JTF enhanced readiness for our continuity of power, the, uh, our, you know, our continuity of government and operations, our home to defense, and the, 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 excuse me, the defense support, civilian authorities, missions, a uh, wide band of things we've improved, the, and the support from the team. So again, joining the NORAD and NORTHCOM team, it will uh, be a learning experience, but I'm looking proud to support that incredible mission. I have to say, shout out to Lieutenant General Pyatt. I was blessed to have, again, a great mentor, sounding board, and supporter of this team as the 57th Director of Army Staff. And we wish you and Cynthia all the best the, uh, when you finally do retire after four plus years at the DAS. Incredible. And thank you for your selfless servant leadership. This change of command is not about me. It's about a team of teams, great Command Sergeant Majors, service members, civilians, and families serving in the JTF, NCR, Military District Washington, and garrison support organizations, our joint force and multi-component teammates, and higher headquarters staffs, along with interagency and community teammates, supporting the unity of effort required to approach this dynamic mission, in support of the diverse missions here in the National Capital Region. Thanks to the NCR military commanders, or equivalent teammates, the uh, Miss Katie A, Ray Alexander, Rear Admiral Ann Swat, Brigadier General Mary Kruger, Major General Sherry McCandless, Rear Admiral Mike Steffen, and now Rear Admiral Nancy LaCour, Major General Jill Jackson, Brigadier General Dave Connolly, and now Major General David Maxwell, and Captain David O'Connell from across the Joint Force. You've been great Joint Force teammates. To my battle buddies, Command Sergeant Major Frank Velez, thanks for your dedicated support to service members, families, and developing the NCO Corps. 
Heather and I wish you and Sandra the very best as you and your family prepare for your upcoming retirement after 33 plus years of service. It was an honor to serve as your Command Sergeant Major. It was our Command Sergeant Major. No better, no better battle buddy. To our former Deputy Commander, Mr. Egon Havrock is here, who retired in December after serving honorably as Deputy Commander since 2006. He has been a leader, an ambassador, and teammate, and friend. Thank you. To my front office, thank you for your dedication and tireless efforts to help me execute our four-hatted uh, you know, responsibilities of this headquarters. To my XOs, Matt, Shay, and Blake, my aides, Shay and Jimmy, my enlisted aide, Sergeant First Class Young, and my driver, Corporal Kim, and my executive assistant, Angie. You are awesome. You kept me on time, you're reliable, and I'm forever grateful for your support. We're proud to serve with you. To our Chiefs of Staff, Brandon, Greg, and Al JJ, you magically balance the integration and synchronization of the diverse mission sets we face and the demands. And again, focused on the priorities. Well done. To the staff, thanks for your daily execution of a wide range of mission sets while assessing new approaches to improve as we supported others. Take pride in all you have accomplished these past two years to meet our unique Joint Task Force National Capital Region, our Military District of Washington, our Senior Commander Headquarters, as well as, again, that General Court Marshal Community Authority for over 400 agencies, the responsibilities and authorities and functions. To my commanders and teams, thank you. Tracy and Chris for your efforts at the Mead Medic, consisting the pandemic, the uh, coming out of it, risk mitigation, and enhancing resiliency in the community. To Greta for your tireless efforts and support and empathy for the Soldier Recovery Brigade and providing the support of the injured, the ill, and to their families. To Win and Now Brennan for operationalizing the Aviation Brigade Headquarters in support of fixed wing and rotor wing operations and enhancing our integration of our National Guard, the uh, enabling force. And congrats on 12th Aviation Battalion winning the Aviation 2022 Hooten Award and Order of the Dalians. Again, a great achievement. John for executing the decentralized missions of the White House with precision and congratulations on winning the Army Transportation Corps Small Unit of the Year for 2022. Andy and Al Bruce, the incredible Army band and music performers of the national and international events for our military leaders as well as community leaders and the public. Jim for the amazing live and virtual musical in ingenuity for the fail band that helps link our Army and its broad history and proud history and opportunities to the American public. Pat and Al Dave for the old guard for the precision of Army and joint ceremony and honors to our fallen and all the missions you do in support as well as your Joint Task Force and Initial Operation Force for our JTF mission. Well done. Drew and now Jason for supporting the world-class live fire training at Fort AP Hill for joint and multi-compo units the, uh, and leading progress. Dave and Al Tasha for leading and operationalizing the Joint Base Henderson Hall and Army Brigade Headquarters that protects senior leaders, supports tenant units and res residents, and supports the Pentagon team in our community. Chris and Al Joe for leading Fort Belvoir and continuing to maximize the trust of our residents, support, tenant units, and integrated community. Josh and Al Michael for leading Fort Meade and enduring the trust and earning the trust of the important relationships of the Cybercom and NSA for our national strategic readiness. Patrick, Steve, and Al Jeremy for your seamless integration of our critical mission here in air defense with five different high headquarters and validation of rotational battalions for a no-fail mission. John for the great teamwork of your Air Force 316 Operational Squadron and First Hill Squadron in support of our JTF mission. And Dean, as an adopted Marine for our chemical, biological, the initial response force, again, phenomenal support and support, again, our national uh, capital region partners. As a former commander, I leave this command with great pride after serving this incredible team of teams of service members, NCOs, warrant officers, officers, civilians, and leaders that led them. You, you set the great example and accomplishments and mission execution of the last two years, improving readiness in a changing environment. I cannot think of a better leader and partner than Trevor Bredenkamp to lead this command. I'm proud to hand over this team to a friend and great Army family and leader. Heather and I wish you, as well as Michelle, the very best in your important mission sets. And again, thanks to Gavin and Greer for helping your mom and dad be so successful as an Army family. So give us a round of applause for them. Please keep those deployed in your thoughts. Never forget those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation and the sacrifice of our Gold Star families. And keep those recovering from the seen and unseen scars of war. Guardian Six, out.
ladies and gentlemen, Major General Bradenkamp. Finally take a breath and look around and see everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Um, distinguished guests, family, friends, interagency partners and members of the Joint Task Force National Capital Region and the Military District of Washington, good morning. And thank you for all making the time to be with us here today. We are excited to be joining this amazing team. General McConville and Lieutenant General Roper, thanks so much for your kind remarks. More importantly, Chief, thanks for your leadership, personal example, and for this opportunity. I'm incredibly humbled and honored to have the privilege of the obligation to serve the service members, civilians, and family members of MDW and the JTFNCR. I would also like to join now in thanking everyone who made this ceremony so special. Thanks to all those from protocol, the ceremonies and outreach team, everyone behind the scenes. And to the old guard and Pershing zone who always look and sound amazing, they had a special touch of class. Nobody does it better. So please join me in a round of applause for everyone who made this possible. As the chief mentioned, I'm fortunate to have had the opportunity to serve in the National Capital Region on a few occasions, different form of combat environment, as, as he alluded to. Um, but it's allowed me to witness closely the incredible contributions made daily by this incredible team. Not just the ones that were here today, but the thousands that they represent. Thank you all for your unwavering commitment to support and defend our Constitution, to honor our fallen, to be ready, and to care for our service members and families. Over the past two weeks, I have started on my journey to learn the myriad responsibilities of the Military District of Washington and the Joint Task Force National Capital Region. And I can honestly say it's truly awesome what all of you do many times behind the scenes for our service members, civilians, and families. Together, we are responsible for land, homeland defense, civil support, and consequence management in the national capital region. And I'm committed to working daily with this incredible team and our federal, state, and local partners in the accomplishment of this task. There are a number of mentors who made the time to be with us today and I think I'm on the clock because my son's got a field trip he's supposed to get to right after this, so I'm going to make this short. So I'm not going to thank everybody individually, but I'm grateful that, that they, uh, they're here. Um, I, I can't thank you all enough for the time that you've spent with me over the last years, 31 years to be exact, um, to make today possible. I would also like to take, take a moment to thank my spouse, Michelle. Of 27 years, we met as lieutenants 29 years ago and we continue on this Army journey together. I love you and I'm grateful for your love, support, and counsel. I get commander guidance all the time, so she's a serving commander, so now I get, to, she's been training me up, getting me ready for this. To our children, Gavin and Greer, you are what is most important to us. We are so proud of you and thank you for supporting us as we continue on this Army journey. To Major General Al and Heather Pepin, Thank you for your friendship over the years and for such a warm welcome to the JTFNCR and MDW team. I can't thank you enough for the incredible transition. And no one is happier than me that you're going to Northcom to be the chief of staff. So I'll have you on speed dial for sure. Both Michelle and I wish you all the best as you transition to the NORAD Northcom team. So guardians of MDW and the JTFNCR, interagency partners and garrison teammates, we are honored to join this amazing team. We look forward to serving with you and facing the challenges together and to be all we can be. Thanks again for making the time to be here. Heed the Guardian, winning matters.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place as Major General Pepin and his family move to the center of the performance floor for a receiving line. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.